Hello everyone. A very warm welcome to the first class of CMA final law. The paper I'm talking about is paper 13, Corporate and Economic Laws new syllabus that is 2022 syllabus. And whenever I address CMA final students, of course, there is a sense of pride within because I'm talking to future CMAs. But more than that, I feel a little content, content because uh, I am addressing a very matured lot. Matured, not in terms of age, but matured because uh, you have seen the ups and downs of this particular course. Right. You have been through a lot and you know how the system works. You know how to embrace failures, if any you have witnessed. If you haven't, by God's grace, you're lucky enough. And your hard work, of course, you have put in a lot of hard work that goes without saying. But if you have ever witnessed failure, it has made you more strong and you're just one step close. The last step to your aim to becoming a CMA. And this is the most difficult step, unfortunately, because it is the most vast uh, coverage of syllabus that you have to study, right? So here we have paper 13, CMA final law. And this particular subject and the CMA course has one similarity, one thing in common. Whenever I talk about the course, you understand that you have to be disciplined. I am talking to a matured lot, so I feel a little relieved. I don't have to constantly push you. I don't have to constantly keep, motivate you. Of course, at times you also need motivation. Everyone does. But you don't have to be constantly motivated. You don't have to be constantly pushed like a little child who gets upset at everything. No, ma'am, this is not happening. No, you understand that. Right? You understand that it's going to be difficult. I'm not trying to scare you. But you have to get this reality check before you start the subject. I hope you understand that this is not going to be super easy. The concepts are going to be difficult. The approach has to be different. You cannot have the same approach as you had till before. Now you, have going, you are going to witness a different approach of reading a particular subject at the finals level. right? But you will be needing motivation every day self-motivation you will be needing discipline every day because this subject and the cma course one common thing as i said is the only discipline or the most important discipline that you need in cma final law as well as cma journey is consistency is consistency if you leave CMA final law, if you leave law, so let's say for one month, two months, okay, I'm not reading this particular subject, later on I'll pick it. It will be very difficult. However, if you give law some time, every day, it will be very fruitful. Okay, so you have to nourish it every day. Just like you uh, garden a plant, you water it every day. Here also you have to give some water to law every day. Fine. So consistency has to be the first element that is needed in this particular subject. And that you have to promise that you will give me. So you have to be consistent. If you're not consistent, don't come and complain. Don't come and blame uh, that, ma'am, this is not happening. Ma'am, this is difficult. It has a wide coverage. This is there. That is there. Institute is doing this. Something is happening. No. These are all the external factors which are not uh, in your control. But what is in your control is consistency. And the first thing that is needed in this particular subject is consistency. Because, my dear, what is there in CMA final law? See, we have a huge coverage. Fortunately, I would call you lucky enough because earlier the coverage was even more. So now the coverage has been reduced. I would say the coverage has been made better. But then uh, it's still something which is huge only. Okay. So this is in our course curriculum. CMA final law. A difficult nut to crack. But 
before we begin one promise that i have taken from you is that consistency you will be consistent in law of course there will be a lot of guidance that i will be providing to you from time to time because that is something which is needed and at every step you have to follow me if i tell you that please write this you have to write this if i tell you that you have to revise it like this you have to revise it like this if i tell you please write this uh, in your examination or write the steps like this you have to write it like that only okay so guidance at every step will be provided of course not uh, intending to be spoon feeding you at this particular level but i will provide the maximum guidance that uh, will not spoil you okay fine so what is there that we have to read so let's get a subject overview first thereafter i will brief you with the methodology that i am going to adapt to teach you what you have to do or how you have to approach when you are uh, taking all these classes what is going to be your approach thirdly and thereafter we will start with the basics of law because we are reading a subject of law we must know the basics of law also okay so we will keep it simple the very first thing what is there in our subject our subject is divided into two sections section a which is corporate laws in corporate laws also you have companies act and other corporate laws other corporate laws involves ibc and cg corporate governance so there are three topics in corporate laws companies act being the most important one because it has a wide coverage of 40 marks when I say Companies Act, you all know that Companies Act has 470 plus the amended sections. You don't have to read all the sections. You have read some sections before. Fortunately, unfortunately, you have to read some sections again. See, CMA Institute aptly understands the mindset of the students or the mindset of Indian people that we tend to forget things. So they'll teach you one thing at the inter level, they'll teach you the same thing again at the final level also because they believe that the students must have forgotten and we want again them to learn, right? So consider it to be advantage or consider it to be disadvantage, whatever you may say, I consider it to be advantage only at the final level because to begin with, reading something that you have already read gives you immense level of confidence and... Um, it's not that uh, when I'm reading, when I'm teaching you the chapter maybe of incorporation of company, which you have read before, which is again repeated at the final level. When I'm teaching you this particular chapter, I do not say to the students that this is not going to be relevant for your examination or this is not going to come in your examination. It very well comes in your examination. And maybe four marks, six marks, there's no limit. Okay. So you cannot take the repeated topics lightly fine so consider it as an advantage you know something you just have to revise that thing and you get marks for it wow wonderful but the approach is going to be different some things are going to be different you don't have to read some things in a lot of detailed manner right so they're going to be a little crisp and short and um, we'll discover that now the next is ibc that is again a wonderful topic and I would say a great move if you want to develop your career in this particular segment. Fine. So it is of 10 marks. Thereafter, Corporate Governance, which is a lot linked to Companies Act. It is a lot linked to SEBI load. Right. So we also have 10 marks devoted to Corporate Governance, which sometimes seems boring to the students but if you understand the zist if you understand the uh, practicality and relate it to the concepts then you'll find it interesting fine thereafter we have section b economic laws and regulations which is only 40 percent we have these things in economic laws and regulations, SEBI regulations, which has again been reduced for the better, I would say. You don't have to read the entire SEBI Act. You just have three regulations that you have to read. Something called as insider trading, something called as takeover code, something called as public offer, ICDR regulations. Fine. You have Competition Act, less coverage. FEMA, not a wide coverage, but there are topics of FDI, ECB also. Banking laws, it includes... Um, your Banking Regulation Act, Insurance Laws, it includes Insurance Act, ADA, MSME, Cyber Security, Money Laundering. Fine. 
Now, before I proceed, often students make a wonderful mistake. They feel and believe that, ma'am, reading this much, reading this much will only fetch me, say, 30, 35 marks. Right. So, why should we read it? Or, let's read the smaller chapters from this and we will skip whatever chapter fi we find difficult. Let's skip a syllabus of say 20 marks or 25 marks because there are so many acts. I will just read this particular portion. I'll read Companies Act. I'll read IBC, Corporate Governance also somehow I'll read and I'll read some the SEBI regulations and that's it. So whatever I read, I'll read it very nicely. You don't have to do this mistake. This is the biggest mistake that you can ever commit. Why ma'am? Because although this has a coverage, this may have a coverage of only 5 marks. Right? But then the paper is never of 100 marks. I hope you know that. Yes. You always get a choice in your paper. Right? So ideally the paper is not prepared of 100 marks. So maybe... This is the blueprint which is given by the institute that somehow this is going to be a 5% only. However, in examination, there may be a situation that from a small chapter like MSME, which has only 5% coverage comes a question or comes 2-3 questions and the total marks coverage goes up to 12 marks. Imagine if you have read this particular ch chapter which is very small, which is not going to invest a lot of your time and you get 12 marks. Isn't this more rewarding? Right? So we are not going to do any selective coverage study. The syllabus has been designed in such a manner so that it grooms you professionally. It gives you an idea of a lot of things because when you move to the industry for work, you should have an idea about a lot of things. Okay, so this particular paper, this particular syllabus has been designed in such a manner. So please understand, enjoy the subject and of course the approach of reading is going to be different because our mission of cracking CMA final law is 80 plus. So when we have good high targets set in our mind, we will somewhere settle down for 70. Not below that. We are not going to settle for below that. Right? So we have a huge target of 80 plus, which is not so huge, which is achievable target, which I am giving you. But of course, the approach has to be different because this is a paper which gives you both set of questions. It also gives you objective questions. It also gives you subjective questions. So you have to prepare yourself in such a manner that you are able to crack objective as well as subjective questions um, very confidently, both set of questions. Okay. So how are we going to do that, ma'am? What is going to be our approach? <coughs> <coughs> I have seen a lot of students um, failing in law or I would say failing in the entire group because of law. And I have seen many students clearing the entire group because of law. So law is a subject which can make you or break you. You have to be very careful with law, right? Uh, it is not just a subject. I would say it is an entire different journey. Because sometimes you might enjoy it, sometimes you might feel it's boring, sometimes you might feel you want to study more, sometimes you might feel, no mom, that's it, right? So it is going to be a roller coaster ride, but um, we are going to maintain one balance and we are going to achieve that balance, don't worry about that. But you cannot do this thing in law which uh, some students attempt to. Mom, I'll just watch some revision videos and I'll just go for some past year paper questions. This is not going to help you, my dear. No. This is not at all going to help you because you will not be able to understand the subject at all. And in law, trust me or not, you have a study mat of around 500 pages or if you go for any reference books, if you look at the questions also, which does not have questions. So if you look at the question bank and all that, maybe somewhere you can settle for a study mat or for a book of somewhere 1000 pages. Now learning 1000 pages is not possible. Had it been possible, I would have said leave everything and mug up the book. 
that will help you no it will not help you so learning 1000 pages will not help you because you cannot learn it if you have the capacity to mug up 1000 pages go ahead and mug it up for your examination it's definitely going to help you but that is something which is not possible right so how to learn ma'am that is the biggest question students face Often students come up with only two things that ma'am we are unable to learn this or we are unable to retain this and second problem we are unable to write answers although I have understood the entire concept. That is the very uh, that is very common mistake or that is very common doubt which students come up with. Now all the students who say that ma'am I have understood everything but I am unable to write they actually don't know that they have not actually learned a lot. Because you have these thousand pages, you must identify what has to be learned in law. You don't have to learn these thousand pages, my dear. No, you cannot. I cannot. Nobody can. It's not just law that you have to read, okay? You have other subjects also, right? So other subjects are also waiting for you. They are also demanding. So you have to give appropriate time to them also you cannot just lead everything and uh, try to learn law so my dear when you understand law half the work is done because when you have understood a particular subject and thereafter a question is asked to you you will have developed a logic for that particular provision and Using that logic, even if you don't remember a particular provision, you will be able to deliver some part of the answer. So, understanding law is very important. Fine. Thereafter, we will screen out. We will actually identify what has to be learned and what can be skipped for learning. Fine. So, what is going to be the teaching method? what is going to be the teaching method or how you have to approach the subject with me is the concept building I hope you are aware of the books that I will be providing uh, to you there will be two main book then there will be chart books and there will be question bank so we have main book in which the entire content is there that means this is an exhaustive book which has everything from tip to toe, right? From that main book, we have to develop the concepts. At the same time, we have to work on highlighting. Highlighting what, ma'am? Highlighting the part that has to be learned. Fine. Like if I say Companies Act has... 470 sections it has 29 chapters supposedly something like this is written so you have to identify this 29 chapters and you have to identify this 470 sections this may not be asked as a descriptive question but this can definitely be asked as an objective question in your examination so this is the part that we will keep on highlighting so you have to keep on highlighting such type of things because after you have understood after we have read the entire book then there will be mm, the question after you have completed a particular chapter then you will have to learn the content or the core provision of that particular chapter so how you will learn one is this highlighted portion and second of course is the chart book so after every chapter we will do the revision from the chart book chart book is the concise or the summary of the main contents Summary including the core content. Fine. Thereafter, we also have to understand how do we present our answers for which we will be using our question bank. So question bank has a lot of questions, some class questions, some self-practice questions also you can say. Right, there are the descriptive questions, the, uh, subjective questions, there are objective questions, right? So, I will teach you the art of writing answers and then there will be some answers which you have to write by your own self also. Okay. So, answer writing or you can say Q&A discussion. Fine. So, these are the three materials that we are going to use. Apart from that, ma'am, we have a wonderful study material which institute gives us. 
well this material is wonderful to understand what is there in our syllabus not to actually read it why ma'am uh, are you actually criticizing it well i'm no one to criticize anything but i am taking the responsibility of guiding the students so i would clear, clearly say please do not use this material for simple reason being that this material is not updated okay so it does not have the latest uh, provisions which should be there having said that students again have the confusion that ma'am institute has written this in their material so when they ask question exam in examination they will expect this answer only to be written no they don't trust me they don't fine because institute releases a supplementary and they are they clearly confirm that okay you have to read this amended portion only but they do not provide you the amended portion in their material so you have to read the amended part only so you are not going to refer to the study material fine you will get 100% coverage in the book which i provide and um, you don't have to refer to that read from the main book read from the chart book read from the question bank which i provide apart from that you will also have a copy a copy notebook notepad whatever you may call ma'am what is going to be in that well here you will do some notings the notings my dear are of two types notings are of two types what are the two types one if i give you an example if i make an additional flow chart if i am writing something you note this you note this for two reasons for involvement in class plus for referring to those examples at the time of revision when you are stuck in a particular provision supposedly you are revising a particular section and you are stuck that what does this say you can always refer back to those section examples which i gave you and this will give you a clarity fine for the students who do not take this notings they suffer second second is the short notes sometimes i will also literally dictate you or make you write a certain thing like procedure of incorporation how a company may be incorporated is a common question which may be asked in your examination but the process of incorporation is huge right and students often get confused that mom what should we write because it should be something that we are able to learn also and we are able to write also given the time limit so at that time i will make you write that write these steps and these are the steps that you have to reproduce in your examination to get good marks fine so sometimes i'll make you note certain things and sometimes you it is just for the involvement in class plus referring back in case of doubt fine so this is how we are going to proceed forth so from the very uh, first day today we are going to only have the chit chat and i'm going to brief you with the basics of law we are not going to actually start our chapter today but from the very next class uh, you must have a proper copy and this copy is not to be mixed with other subjects so you please have a separate copy for law and um, keep a highlighter with you till the time you don't have maybe hard copy books for those who do not have hard copy books maybe they can uh, keep noting the important points somewhere right because once you have read a particular book you should have a handy material with you to identify what has to be marked up what has to be learned because undoubtedly no matter how much you boast about at the end of the day you have to learn certain things in law fine most importantly the limits and all that has to be learned there is no other logic in that right fine okay so my dear corporate and economic laws you know what the subject is all about now when i'm talking about corporate and economic laws although it is divided into two parts the very first question comes is what is laws or what is law we are going to first commence with corporate law so corporate and economic laws within that section a corporate laws within that companies act within that whatever content we have to read in companies act that we will read we don't we are not going to read the entire companies act right but to get there 
the very first step what do you mean by law right what is law we all know law is a set of rules and regulation hai na uh, when i go out i have to drive a car there will be a road undoubtedly yes ma'am i step out of my home and i'm driving a particular car there comes a traffic signal which says a red light do i stop yes of course ma'am you have to follow the traffic rules why rules i have to traffic the follow the traffic rules why because i'm driving a car had i not been going out i wouldn't have to follow those traffic rules because i'm driving a car on the road and there are some motor vehicle act there are some traffic rules which have been designed because people are able to drive peacefully to avoid accidents to live in a peaceful and civilized society there are rules made at every step so if i'm driving a car i have to follow those rules if i am running a company i have to follow the rule i have to follow uh, the laws which have been made for company right but why should we follow the law which is made by someone else like come on if if i am living in my house my parents tell me what should i do the neighbors don't tell me what should i do and i don't follow what my parents say why will i follow what the neighbors are saying likewise if some x y z they have come in power and they are making some rules why should we follow the rules well my dear back to basics the supreme power lies in the hands of people that's what the constitution says so after independence there was a constitution which was written which clearly says that india is a democratic nation republic right and the supreme power lies in the hands of people so it is going to be by the people of the people for the people right so we actually make law we don't know that we say that okay modi ji has introduced gst no my dear he hasn't we are the ones who have introduced it knowingly unknowingly we are the ones who are creating more burden for us right we are the ones who are reviving the nation we are the ones who are making new laws every day why because we are the ones who have elected some representatives to take decisions on our behalf because we are a nation of around 140 145 cr everyone cannot be knocked at the door and asked is it okay if we make this law they cannot give their assent like this so rather a whole nation the whole nation is being divided into small small territories and we the people actually elect our representatives we elect two representatives one is the state elections and the other is the central elections right so one representative representative goes straight to lok sabha which is the member of parliament and the other representative that is the state elections the other elections that particular representative is the part of state legislative assembly which is mla right they actually eventually elect the people who sit in the upper house which is the rajya sabha right so just a brief introduction of how the election system and how this particular thing works now just a second my dear what is law law is a set of rules and regulations fine uh, why should we follow law because we are the ones who have actually made law and uh, i want uh, everyone i uh, hope you have a copy if you don't have i still want you to write this please write it somewhere see indian constitution is something which is supreme many of you must be knowing this i think there will be hardly 10% of the students who might not know this even if you know it's great it's a quick recall for you if you do not know please write this somewhere because these are the basics you must know about law how law is being made and why are we following something which is not made by us right so constitution is undoubtedly supreme and it has given power to people of india to people of 
India to elect representatives. Fine. To elect representatives. So they elect representatives and uh, one representative goes to Lok Sabha and the other one to Legislative Assembly. Fine. They also, the members also elect and thereafter the members go to Rajya Sabha. The people who sit in Lok Sabha are called as members of parliament. The people who sit in Rajya Sabha are also called as members of parliament. The people who sit in the Legislative Assembly, they are called as members of Legislative Assembly that we call as MLAs. Right. Now, my dear... Constitution also says that power to make laws lies in the hands of parliament. Lies in the hands of parliament. What do we mean by parliament? Parliament is equal to Lok Sabha plus Rajya Sabha plus President. There is no role of Prime Minister over here. Who are Prime Minister or who are President? Uh, sorry, who are uh, Ministers? The whole nation has been divided into small, small territories. I, as a citizen of India who is entitled to vote, I elect a particular representative. The one who gets the highest votes is elected or is the final candidate from that particular area who is going to Lok Sabha, right? So he becomes a member of parliament and sits in that Lok Sabha. Now, in that Lok Sabha, out of all the available seats, the party which gets the majority seats, becomes the ruling party. Right? BJP, Congress, whatever we consider. So that particular party becomes the ruling party of the nation and of the members who are in the ruling party, the ruling party decides that which particular member is going to get the post of which minister of all the available ministers. So thereafter, the ministers are being divided. They are being given the position. And the person who heads these ministers is called as the prime minister. So it is the leader of those ministers. Fine. Ma'am, what is the role of these ministers then? What is the role of these ministers then? My dear, uh, if I talk about wings of government... If I talk about wings of government, we have three bodies. We have executive, we have legislative and we have judiciary. Okay. Supreme power lies in the hands of people or for us, whatever the constitution says is supreme. And the constitution says that we, the people of India, can elect representatives and our representatives are going to be uh, classified in such a particular manner. They are legislative body. They are legislative body. That means they have the power to make laws power to make laws for the country lies in the hands of this legislative body. What is it? We are not talking about state laws, just like we have ministers in the nation, we also have in the state, just like we have a prime minister, we also have, uh, sorry, just like we have a chief minister, we also have a prime minister, just like we have president in the nation, we also have a governor of the state, but we are not concerned about the state laws over here, we are not concerned about how the state works, we are concerned about the national laws that we are talking about, so we will only deal with that. 
okay so nation wide who has the power to make laws it is the parliament that means the members who are sitting in lok sabha the members who are sitting in rajya sabha plus the president so all these three comprises and together they are called as parliament and parliament has been conferred to make laws parliament has been conferred the power to make laws or i would say central laws which are made for the entire nation okay so legislative body in our nation for central laws is parliament executive body in our nation is is actually the ruling government or i would say government central government they have the power to enforce law that means they do not make law they ensure that the law and order is followed how do they work this they work through different ministries they work through different ministries so we have ministry of health we have ministry of defense for the for us the most important one that we are going to read over here is mca what is mca it is ministry of corporate affairs so ministry of corporate affairs actually oversees the entire work relating to corporates fine so when i'm talking about companies act it will come under ministry of corporate affairs so how we are running our companies are we doing everything as suggested by law or not it is overseen by mca ministry of corporate affairs fine example this was an example ministry of corporate affairs and then we also have a judiciary body which uh, are actually which actually power to interpret law power to give punishment if the law is not followed so we have judiciary and uh, what is judiciary of course these are the courts etc that we have in our nation fine so this is how uh, government works right so my dear when i am talking about uh, making of law constitution gives power to parliament to make laws on certain matters constitution also give power to state to make laws on certain matters we have something called as a union list we have something called as a state list we have something called as a concurrent list fine so there are certain matters on which only parliament can make law there are certain matters on which state can also make law and there are certain matters on which both can make laws so using the power which using the power which is conferred on parliament to make laws on certain matters parliament has used the power and thereafter made a beautiful law called as companies act 2013 what have they made companies act 2013 so under corporate law the first topic that we are going to read is companies act 2013 only and um, what is there in companies act or before that before i go to what is there in companies act here i have read or here i have written the word act until now i was only talking about law 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 so what is the difference between law and what is the difference between what is the difference between law and act well you all know that law is a much wider term it includes act it includes ordinance right it includes the rules it includes regulations it includes the circulars it includes the notifications etc fine so all this is law act is just a part of it act is just a part of it what is act act is nothing but a set of rules for a particular topic or for a particular field which has been comprised 
in one set and it has been passed by parliament so that is an act so we have some draft rules we have some draft rules which we call as bill that is being introduced to both houses of parliament they approve it thereafter the president approves it and when the president assent is accorded it becomes an act this is something that you know it come on you have read it in foundation you have read it in inter and again i'm repeating the same thing so i will not uh, take a lot of time in explaining you how a bill is being converted into an act right so let me go through the charts and thereafter you will get it fine so what is the meaning of law law is a system of or set of rules created and enforced through government so it is created by parliament and enforced through government is it different from act yes law is a wider term which includes act rule circular notification regulation etc who makes act and law whoever has the power under constitu constitution matters under union list state list and concurrent list some matters like revenue matters which are given in union list the power is to make law the power to make law is with parliament then you have some power with state legislature and thereafter some power with both if you do not comply law you will have liability attracted liability could be imprisonment it could be penalty fine damages and likewise how an act is passed a bill is drafted it is published in newspaper for suggestion it is introduced to parliament um firstly in lok sabha i wouldn't say that specifically because there are certain bills which can be introduced in both that means it can be firstly introduced in rajya sabha also or it can be firstly introduced in lok sabha also there are certain bills on which there is restriction like money bills uh, you don't have to read that in detail fine so it may be opposed there after you get the approval there after it is forwarded to the other house after opposing deliberations references whatever it is there it is passed in both the houses it is sent to president the president gives assent and bill becomes an act fine okay ma'am when we talk about corporate law in corporate law we have to read about companies act how companies act was made so we have two things how companies act is made and who enforces companies act so the legislative body for companies act is parliament parliament got the power from union list residual entry 97 and using that power parliament has made or has passed companies act 2013 who enforces companies act 2013 it is the central government so central government ensures that this law which is made by parliament is followed properly how do they ensure that they ensure this through the ministry which is ministry of corporate affairs mca right okay now ideally if we talk about the history it has been uh, not so important it is not so important for you but however companies act also after a lot of rejections referrals it got approved finally on 29th august 2013 by the president and um, it became companies act 2013 to regulate the form of business organization which is company okay now i want you all to write something please in your examination there may be a question called as evolution of companies act evolution of companies act although they haven't taught you a lot of evolution but still it can come in your examination and if it does you have to write this only <coughs> i'm so sorry evolution of companies act see the first structured law this could come in examination the first structured law for companies act was companies act 1913 companies act 1913 sorry and whenever you write act you always have to ensure that you write you use capital a for writing act because when you write this way this does not mean an act or a law it means an action okay 
then first companies act of independent india of independent india was companies act 1956 and thereafter after setting various committees after setting various committees new companies act 2013 was drafted almost after 57 years so it took long 57 years to come up with a new act Although Companies Act 1956 was also a wonderful act, but considering the changed um, scenario, it was uh, becoming obsolete, and the need was felt that you need to revive this particular act because of the growing importance of this form of business organization that is company. Okay, so Companies Act 2013 got the assent. of president on 29th august 2013 and was notified on 30th august 2013 fine it has 29 chapters 470 sections seven schedules and a lot of rules i'm sorry for the handwriting i hope you are able to read it that's why i was dictating also fine hope you have written it if not you may also take a screenshot you can write for the later okay now because we are talking about companies act we at least need to know what a company is although you have read about the basics of the company before but um, Yes, here we have companies act divided into twenty nine chapters, four seventy section, lot of rules, seven schedules. In our CMA final law syllabus, we have some content that we have to read. We don't have to read entire all the sections. We have to read certain chapters, and uh, in that certain chapters also we have certain things that we don't have to read. So accordingly, we will read according to our syllabus. That is not our place of concern. Uh, that is not our point of concern. But 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 but. before we read companies act we need to know the basics you know the basics already if i ask you mom company is an artificial person it has perpetual succession and like things yes i know you know the basics and um, we'll begin with the basics in the next class only i'm not going to keep this uh, class uh, long because it's the very first class but let me tell you that um, the charts that i share with you the content that i am giving you and the thing that i am going to make you write please follow this specifically when you we are also talking about the features of the company or what are the basics of the company or what you have to write and what you have to read and what you have to know it is something that i'm going to tell you okay so when i say features of the company there are specific points that i have incorporated in the charts and those points only you are going to write in your examination fine because we have two goals when we are reading law one is to have a super duper understanding of law to become such proficient in law that we are able to um, actually uh, it should not be difficult for us to adapt in the professional environment after becoming a professional and second and the most important one is to crack cma final law examination with exceptional marks so exam oriented always we have to be apart from the understanding that we develop right so see you all in the next class and there we will actually start with some company basics and thereafter companies act 2013 thank you